Companies, if they aren't looking at their data constantly, they, they need to. Who's coming to your site is very reflective of who you need to be reaching. It sounds like a very open and broad and obvious concept, but it's true. It's, it's very important to take whoever is very receptive to your marketing already and amplify that and scale that. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast, an auditory journey through the latest in marketing, branding, and advertising. Now, here's your Marketing Expedition Guide, Ray Allen. On this week's episode of the Marketing Expedition Podcast, I get to speak with Kendall Shu, and he has been a marketing professional for nearly two decades in Idaho and California. And currently, he is a search engine marketing manager with Boise-based performance digital marketing agency, Velox Media. Kendall loves helping clients navigate the consumer path to purchase and come up with creative ideas to generate success. He discovered his passion for marketing with the National Student Advertising Competition almost 20 years ago. And as a broadcast media professional, he was a senior digital account executive with KTVB for nine years. And afterwards, he was the digital sales manager for three years at KBOI TV. And he's also operated as director of sales for KIVI, that's channel six here in the Boise area. He's also worked with the in-house marketing and production teams at the Yamaha Corporation and Cap Ed Credit Union. Kendall serves as the, or has served as the president of the Boise Advertising Federation and currently sits on the board for the Idaho Advertising Federation and serves as the college program's liaison for the Northwest region, District 11 and of the American Advertising Federation. Outside of the office, Kendall spends his time with his wife, Margot, and two young daughters, Brianna and Emmy. And an Idaho native, he enjoys drumming, motorcycles, hiking, running, camping, and hanging out with the family dog, Sheldon. And a fun fact about Kendall is that he is a professional drummer and has played live music throughout the Western United States and has also taught many high school students, percussionists, drum lines, and performance groups. We're going to talk a lot about digital marketing, paid media, networking, local media, and of course, we're going to talk about INSAC, the National Student Advertising Competition, and he's got a lot of good nuggets to share, and I can't wait to get this in your ears. But first, it's time for our Marketing Essentials Moments, the basics that you need to help you continue to build your brand and your bottom line. This week's topic, I want to talk about collaboration over competition. We address this in the, in the podcast, but I think that the main thing is the more you know and the more you, the more people you know, the more you grow as a business. So think about how collaboration can help you in your business or in your industry. If you're another agency owner, if you are um, you know, an entrepreneur or whatever the case might be, but think about how you can collaborate and build those stronger connections with your industry and other industry owners. I belong to uh, what's called a peer group through Second Wind, which is a uh, consulting uh, just resources for other agency owners. And I am in this group with other advertising agency owners from across the country. And it's great to bounce ideas off of each other. And, you know, sure, we might have crossover. Maybe we do some very similar things. But the idea behind being able to collaborate, knowing who is stronger in certain areas that you could refer business to, and then it'll reciprocate ideally. I mean, not always, but the idea is that you give first and then maybe you'll get to receive an abundance. And that's the idea. If you can collaborate versus be in a competitive mode or mindset all of the time, there are certain things that can happen, certain magic that can occur because the people that you're collaborating with may have, you know, really good, strong skill sets in other areas that you might not. So then you can work together to then, you know, ultimately have the your the end result best in mind for your client. So having the ability to refer other people can then really truly come back to you in in many different ways. So thinking about how you can serve the need of your client best, even if it is somebody who you would consider a competitor, 
that's okay. Maybe the capacity that you have, you know, you're you've got so many clients you can't you can't work with them, so many customers you can't take them on. So being able to have trusted people that you can easily refer business to is is a way to be able to still continue to serve the client and have great customer service or vice versa. They may not uh, be able to have a capability that you have. And so they can refer business back to you. And working together in parts and components and pieces of areas that they're super talented in can help you elevate what you're able to provide to the clients that you work with. So collaboration over competition, right? And and the nice thing about having these industry consortiums, if you will, or peer groups, is that you can bounce ideas off of other others. Maybe there are people who have gone through something similar that, that you have before um, or that you're wanting to go through that, that you could get advice from or maybe just nuggets of wisdom that you could then embrace because they have been there and done that and want to help you. And generally people want to help. And, and so thinking about how they can help you in a way that's not going to be, um, you know, coercion or, or manipulation or, you know, all the things that kind of come with negativity when you're in a competitive environment. And sure, maybe there's an opportunity where a client, um, a potential client will go to both of you. And it's always about the right fit, right? Is that client going to be the right fit for you? Do you have the capabilities that the client needs? And if not, then, you know, it can be that ripple effect of being able to refer that. And, you know, it's empowering other people, getting them to the next level. And sure, there might be some times where it's sticky or uncomfortable, but getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, talking through it, you know, being able to collaborate and and make that happen and make it a win-win situation where you can refer and receive referrals back. That is really beneficial for you to think about and open your network up to other people who maybe are very similar in your industry, but learn from them because the more you know, the more you're going to grow. Welcome to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Allen. I'm the president and CEO of Pepper Shock Media and the founder of the Marketing Expedition community. And today's guest, we have Kendall. Welcome to the show, Kendall. Thanks for having me. And say your last name for me, because I always maybe mess it up. Shoe, S-H-E-W, uh, like, like, the, the, like shoe. the tennis shoe, yeah. Yeah, but it's spelled S-H-E-W, so yeah, maybe maybe people mess it up. I don't know. So Kendall Shoe, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's actually people do uh, uh, change the misspelling on me very often, but I guess the spelling that I have is the one that's the most common in Germany. Uh, everything oh. else uh, that people misspell it as is, is more uh, common here in the States. Well, there you go. You had your opportunity yeah. to, to set the record straight. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's okay. My name gets messed up all day, every day. So I, you know, <laughs> I'm with you. <ya. laughs> That's fine. So Kendall, um, let's tell our audience more about you. And um, I mean, you've had kind of a, an eclectic journey in your marketing space that you're on now. So let's just take it back a little bit and, and share. And, and I know you went to Boise State, go Broncos, um, but we'll, we'll, and we'll get into that too. But just, uh, you know, kind of share your journey with us and, and that way our audience can know who is talking. <laughs> sure. Um, so um, yeah, I, I, I had a plan uh, coming out of uh, high school, not high school, but uh, go, going to college about getting into the music industry for product marketing. That was going to be my end game. So I got uh, signed up and I got accepted into an internship in Southern California for Yamaha. And it was a great experience, but unfortunately it didn't turn into a full-time gig. So defeated, deflated. So I, I came home and uh, wanted to figure out what was next. I already had the undergrad degree, but somebody who I know I knew in the industry was doing an adjunct uh, or was an adjunct professor with a media buying class. It was Vicki Eventoyer, formerly of St. Uh, Luke's, and I was just a big fan of hers. And so I took that just additional class. I had already had the degree, but I just wanted to get networked into it. And so uh, the person who that she was bringing in for a guest speaker one of these days became my future supervisor for Channel 7. And then I got into the lane of vendor marketing. So completely a big shift from this. I thought I was going to go into uh, client side agency marketing for products being the music industry, but it was funny that I ended up as a vendor and uh, vendor of sales, and I had a great time doing that. Worked at Channel Seven for nine years and really enjoyed that experience of walking a customer through. And and not that uh, anybody who's been a vendor 
is is this type of category but i felt like i wanted to be the good guy i wanted to go in there and uh you know try to be a little bit more understanding of clients needs and especially during this days because i was pure play internet selling that they really needed a lot of hand holding and after about nine years of channel seven i was ready to get into management enjoyed a really good time over with sinclair media over at channel two here in town and uh worked worked through uh not only what we could do as a station, but also what we could do as a company and then taking digital to a bigger scale there. But I think I had some, uh, I still wanted to see what client side was all about. So I was lucky to work uh, for over a year over CapEd Credit Union doing regional marketing. And that was so fun because I was able to do the controls. That was one of my biggest frustrations on the sales side, all of the implementation side. That's actually probably one of the most important parts about it is I was finding myself, and this is no disparagement to anybody who I worked with in the past, is just it's busy trying to turn out all of these campaigns. So I felt like there might've been a little bit of quality left in that experience so getting to client side and eventually to agencies i was at the controls i could do those things and it was nice to be able to be on the other side in fact actually i think i've operated in every seat around maybe the marketing strategy digital marketing table i've been vendor training vendor sales and i've been in client side and agency environments after CapEd, i got into a couple of agency uh stays and i what I was really excited about especially here at velox was about performance marketing, lower funnel marketing, that became my passion. Uh, you have you can figure out attribution for a lot of impressions and what you flood into a website uh, off of visits and everything like that, but the conversion is really where it's at. And that's where I really fell in love with is what the end result was for what we would drive for revenue and other things that we would do for our clients. And so I've really enjoyed this performance marketing lane. Well, it's definitely given you a unique perspective to be on, you know, all sides of the table, either, yeah. you know, being the vendor to the agencies or to the clients that you serve and then being on the client side and now working for an agency. I think that's very valuable to be able to understand what each of those seats and how they play out. And then having been in those seats, right, being able to now work with the vendors that you work with as an agency and in the agency seating, you now you know what they go through and and understand the maybe the trials and tribulations as a exactly. you know a, <laughs> a sales rep from an agency or I mean from a, a, a TV station doing digital and and all the things. And now you've gotten on the other side because what is interesting to me is when we work with uh, vendors, we always want to know okay what are the numbers, what are the results, you know, and then on the flip side tracking it and kind of making sure that what's happening is 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 getting fulfilled and and so now you can you know know what what's up when they you know are are selling to you versus when you were selling you know like you when you were a rep for us like we could 100 and figure it out you know <laughs> yeah i think it also makes the product the conversations a lot more productive because i've occupied some of those seats and um uh, and sometimes it you know, is an advantage when a vendor does call on you you it's sometimes if it's not a fit it's those are very quick conversations because you can explain to them exactly why it wouldn't be a fit uh or yeah it's 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 great to be able to have have some empathy and sympathy for what people are doing when we work together that's great good collaboration for sure yeah and so <clears throat> i also wanted to kind of uh share uh, your role with uh, the Boise Ad Federation, the American Advertising Federation, and kind of the things and and how we've been working together recently, just because yes. of um, what I'm doing with with Boise State. So let's uh, kind of educate a little bit about uh, the organizations that you're a part of and what your role is there, and then we can also talk about NSAC, the National Student Advertising Competition. But uh, just share a little bit more about BAF and what is it for those that are listening that need to know about uh, this organization if they're in marketing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, I'm uh, on my technically my last year as an advisory role with the Boise Advertising Federation. Uh, they have uh, vice president into president, eventually chairman of the board, executive chairman of the board. That's almost like a five year arc to um, provide a little bit of transitional things. Boise Advertising Federation's uh, leadership and boards are different than others. Typically, you'll have local ad federations that have people that stay on forever. As long as they are willing to do it, they will let you serve on the board for 10 or 20 years. Uh, Boise is a little bit different because it, it volunteer organizations in general can be a lot of work. And so having those shorter terms, the two to three years, if you're in a board of directors position, but if you get into leadership, 
that track is is good because it allows you to almost kind of be mindful of what what's 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 on the horizon what's next and then realize that you have five years to get done what you need to get done but boise advertising federation i don't know if you knew this is it's boise's uh longest running nonprofit. um it was founded in 1910 and we were hoping to do a really exciting 110 year celebration during COVID, but some of those plans got derailed. Maybe we'll work on something really exciting for the 120 years. But it represents um, marketing professionals, advertising professionals, mostly in the Treasure Valley area, who want to grow their knowledge in this space. We also want to encourage people to get younger people who are new to the industry into these jobs, not only on the company side, but in the agency. And also with these media vendors, there's tons of positions and there's tons of opportunity. From my perspective, as I thought I was going to get into agencies, I thought I was going to get into client side immediately. And I totally didn't see this other lane over here with vendor marketing. So it's all that stuff that we're trying to point people to that there are all of these occupations within marketing from the agency from the client from the vendor side of what they can do and then also what we can do to help move the category forward uh, boise has a very vibrant um, agency community and we do some really exciting things around here and it's really great to celebrate that we roll up to the idaho advertising federation and work with them to award the best in idaho with the creative awards with the rockies the idaho advertising federation uh lumps together different uh, sects of uh advertising bodies in eastern idaho northern idaho and throughout the state with some out large memberships it's great to have that coverage but we are all a part of the american advertising federation and that is encouraging what we do here locally but also on a larger scale uh, American Advertising Federation, they work with uh, larger brands that you would already be familiar mm -hmm. with about how how to, this very thing is to get people involved in the industry and how can we move this category forward. But what's really exciting. Well, there's chapters in lots of different areas and and then they all come together and, and there's exactly. a big conference and, and exactly. And of, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the most fun conferences I got to go to was the American Advertising Federation Western Region. It was in Sacramento. And I met a lot of people at that time. And I was I was serving as president at the time. And so it was very important for me to get some ideas from these other markets because our struggles in Boise aren't any different than what they may have in other markets. And so it's always nice to bounce those ideas off of them. But the American Advertising Federation, they also get very uh, passionate about what can we do about making the students uh, at colleges excited about this industry. And they sponsor the National Student Advertising Competition. They take a major brand who's willing to step up for a sponsorship cost, but they solicit all these different responses to a marketing problem that they're having. It's ranging from how do we get new customers? How do we grow a new demographic? How do we do a variety of things? And students nationwide take these case studies and they have teams with these various colleges that compete regionally to come up with the best solution that the client would be excited about. If I was a brand, I would be excited about sponsoring this because talk about getting hundreds of different ideas from all of these different college programs because these companies mm -hmm. do get to keep all of those strategies. And I know that uh, I've heard stories, uh, Toyota, they were a sponsor in 2003. You're seeing some of those strategies even today of what had come out of some of those student competitions and some of the ideas that had come from that. So it's a very good program, not only for the brand, but also it's a really good program for the students to get somewhat of a real access to what these type of pitches would be like to win a client in an agency pitch. Absolutely. And I get to um, <laughs> partake in this. And, and, and you're I doing a great see. job. <laughs> we'll see how they do yeah. this year. But I, you know, we had to go on hiatus. Boise State did and, and several others did too during the pandemic. And so resurrecting the program, getting the ad club up and running again and getting the students involved again. And it, it just it, it brings joy to see that they get this opportunity to be able to be in as a real world scenario as possible before they go into the, you know, the, 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 the real, real world, right. Where they're yes. out there getting jobs. So I know that it's a big deal when you can put this on your resume and as you have, you went through this process as well. And it's definitely in our industry when somebody says that they've competed uh, at the national student advertising competition, they got to pitch a real brand and go through this process and have Q&A with the client and be able to be in front of them and give them that opportunity, especially after this pandemic where a lot of uh, students really, they didn't get up in front of anybody and present because they were just on a screen. 
for all this time. And so now it's giving them that opportunity to get that experience, getting in front of, you know, people. I tell my students, you we're getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? Yes. It's not something that you, you know, do every day, but you can perfect it and get really good at it and, and then be able to share and present and, and compete. And just like agencies do, right? When an RFP, a request for proposal comes up, we're all competing for the business and pitching and coming up with ideas and, you know, trying to sell our idea and why we think our idea is better than anybody else and, you know, backing it up with research and, and understanding for sure. But let's share a little bit about your experience when you did INSAC, Kendall, the year that you did it, um, okay. you know, kind of maybe just so that people who don't, aren't, who are not familiar with it, just have an understanding of what you went through. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> it certainly is this internship on steroids. Um, and you don't get paid for it. So, uh, but you get a credit from the class and you get this uh, amazing wealth of experience, which is very important. Um, our, our structure was a little bit different. We started out with uh, a ton of research uh, for, that was the, what the whole first semester was because it was a two semester for back when we did it. I know that some programs do it a little bit truncated and shorter version of it, but uh, we, that was my first time that I, I had used marketing research and uh, finding insights and really, okay, so that's who they want to go after, but is there this other group that they should be going after too? And so you can find these anomalies and find these opportunities and data. And that was really fun to do that because I, here I was at uh, 23 years old, uh, you know, running these indexing reports off of magazines off of the, in, in the United States. And it was just so cool. And I developed the passion for media in particular. And so going through that first semester was great. We got, we knew the client inside and out. We knew our data inside and out. And then when it turned over to second semester, it was okay. Now what? We then looked at what we could take from that research and our opportunities. And we were a little bit mavericky. We took some bold moves. I mean, we stayed within the boundaries, but we we looked at maybe we do adjust the demographic down a couple of years. Maybe we look at adding in these other things because or that's what the data told us what we should do. Uh, we brainstormed and I had never been a part of that process. I mean, we've been a, all a part of group projects if we've been in college or uh, 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 learning environments. But this was something mm -hmm. completely different. I'd never been in a creative brainstorm and going through that whole process was fascinating because we got to the 11th hour and we were so in love with the concept that we came up with. It was a Visit Florida uh, campaign where that was the client, FLA USA. We came up with this thing with trips with juice, you know, around orange juice and uh, rockets and all of these things. But turns out it just, it was hokey. It just it didn't land flat, even with the execution that we were trying to come up with. And so here we were plans book due in about three weeks, we had to start from scratch. And so we did, and we went into a more of a Latin themed uh, campaign with SOL, soul is how it's pronounced, but we really replaced it with this whole idea of re you know, reinvigorating your soul and finding your soul in Florida. And that was so fun. And so we went through that whole process and in a three week timeline, had to completely redo everything that we did, both from visually and strategy. And it, we got it done. Um, spring break i didn't have a spring break that year we were hunkered down at our team leader's house uh pretty much 24 7 <laughs> cranking out all of these things and we burned the midnight oil and once the deadline was came and went we put it in there and we went to competition and had a great time uh, meeting other schools who went through the same process but it's also really fun to see what they came up with i mean i'm not bitter we were second place that year <laughs> uh, Port portland state had a had a mask theme and Oh, we felt ours was so much better with with the soul of Florida. But of the course, funny thing is, <laughs> and this was and this was pre-internet era. I can say the story now is they had uh, informed us that I, one of the major regional airlines had done an SOL with Soul meeting uh, in the area before, and so they reminded us that when we had time with the judges for them to go over what they thought of our presentation, what they thought of our plans, book, and proposal. But it was really funny, but we didn't know that. But we, mm -hmm. we but the execution was solid through and through. It was great to learn end-to-end -end marketing. Back in those days, I don't want to, well, it, technically it was 20 years ago, so I guess it was <laughs> a long time ago. But the digital line item was about this tiny. It was very, mm -hmm. very small. Most of our budget was being wrapped up in print media and, and TV media. Hardly any was going to digital. And I've seen some of the NSAC presentations and plans book these days, and they're very digital heavy now, completely mm -hmm. in opposite of what we did back in 2003, 2004. 
Right, right. Well, and it's just a sign of the times, you know, exactly. but it's what's occurring now versus then. And especially since pandemic really um, pushed people to go and double down on digital. And so, yeah, I'll, I definitely will see a, a transition with, with that. But now moving forward, the students will go, they'll compete at district level. And then from there, when we win, <laughs> when we win, I love when we per, win. project uh, the positivity. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then go to semifinals and then go to nationals, which is in conjunction with the American Advertising Federation uh, conference, the big conference that'll happen and take place. So I think it's just a really great way for students all over to get exposed to the to this organization to be a part of you know the industry and meet other industry professionals and after we compete after when when it's all you know okay to do then we'll we'll get to work and do a, comp- a presentation with our local chapter of Boise Advent which now all of our students are members of American Advent so uh, you know kind of boils down to being members of Idaho Advent and and Boise Advent and I'm sure that's like that for all all the different regions for, for everywhere but it's good for them to be in immersed in this already and getting to meet maybe their potential employers. Like you said, you you met your boss in the process of going through the school. And so I'm looking forward to them getting to to network and then be a part of the Rockies, the awards show and being, you know, immersed into to what is next for them, right? I mean, yeah. this is the next generation of, of who's who our um, employees are going to be. And so if we can prepare them as much as possible and in, in some of these real world experiences, that brings me joy to be able to get them to the next stage. And, and it's great because, you know, oftentimes people say, oh, I learned all about the book smart in school. You know, college taught me all the book smart, but not practical application. And this is definitely giving them that opportunity to have that application. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting because if the students don't show up to class, well, you know, in the real world, you'd get fired if you don't communicate or you don't show up, right? So, I mean, we've had this conversation about you show up or you get fired and, and you know, Yep. So, so it's, it's, it's fascinating to see them transition from kind of the traditional, you know, classroom setting to, to now really being immersed into a real world scenario and getting to see and listen to the Q and A and, and all of the, the processes that you go through the research, they're doing surveys and all this, all these fun things. So um, not to mention and, the big party at the end. Uh, right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, these, yes. These district, these regional uh, competitions, they're all very nervous. But once that presentation is over, they really let their hair down. We did. So yeah. <laughs> uh, they'll, it'll, it'll, it'll be nice uh, that they'll cheers with each other and uh, put that all behind them. Well, and didn't you say you met people that you're still friends with today after having gone to the, you know, the, the competition? And yeah, I am. Yeah, we, we uh, had uh, time with uh, two Montana schools, Oregon schools. We had uh, interfacing with some more Idaho institutions, BYU-Idaho, University of Idaho. Um, it was just great. It was, uh, it's so, okay, these are still LinkedIn connections. These are still personal mm-hmm. connections. And it's so cool seeing everybody's journey that has happened since then. Mine has certainly been unique. I'm sure uh, everybody's has been unique as well. It's, uh, it's great to have those people that you can call on for advice and other things later on in your career. Well, let's talk, since we are talking about career and, you know, I think I'm going to force my students to watch this, not force, they get to. (laughs) They get to. It's a delight. Well, hopefully I make it a a positive experience. (laughs) Yes, yes. But let's give them some some ideas, some advice um, as they are about to approach graduation, some of them, most of them. Uh, You know, what kind of advice would you give the students who are about ready to enter the job market? I mean, what kinds of things do you consider to be what they need to know now? Yeah, um, I'm still trying to figure that out uh, myself. (laughs) Um, We uh, uh, here at Velox, uh, we sometimes involve other members of our team in the hiring and interview process. And so, you know, what we're trying to look uh, for from people are people who are willing to jump in and come into things with an open mind. Um, And that's typically what a lot of organizations look for is someone, I mean, a lot of these companies have established processes, but, you know, we're also looking for people with who have fresh perspectives, but also, uh, especially for somebody who's coming out of college who doesn't have the skill set, but if they have the passion, that's more, that's more important than anything. If they have the passion, they want to jump into the industry. The passion is the biggest piece because everything else can be taught. I mean, within reason, but it's important that someone has passion coming into an organization. I think in terms of something that I would recommend anybody to do who has been a part of the national student advertising competition or really any marketing club 
um, American Marketing Association is another one. Call those out on your LinkedIn uh, really prominently. There's a couple of different places that you can put it into nonprofit involvement. You can put it into in line with your experience. You can put it up in your page header. So think about from an SEO perspective, how many ways and how many different ways can I include that? I was involved in these types of associations and marketing. And so when people are doing searches on LinkedIn, that does come up to the top. So in case they're looking for somebody who's been a part of the American uh, Marketing Association or people who have been a part of the American Advertising Federation, all of those keywords are addressed. And be proud of all of the accomplishments that you did during that time. You should really pedestal that, that that was something that you did. Not a lot of people get to do it. And it truly is a skin thickening experience. And you should uh, be very proud of it, that you got through it and what you did learn from it. So really play it up, not only on LinkedIn, your resume is another good place to do it too. And also really think about what what you did. Uh, look at how you maybe got into analytics, maybe look how you got into media buying and really play up those competencies. And so if you liked a certain aspect about that whole experience, Go in and double down on it some more. I mean, I'm I'm jealous uh, of 2023 because in 2003, it's not like I could Google supplemental resources. You can Google supplemental resources in any part of the advertising journey. And I would say take what you learned from that experience and build on it uh, because mm -hmm. it's a very long amount of time from the, uh, um, well, it's actually a short amount of time from the time that you're done with the project to when you're finally graduated. It's about a month, month and a two weeks, and you need to have somewhat of a plan. Uh, also start networking. So if you yourself are looking to get out there, get a part of these clubs, there are not only advertising federations, marketing associations, there's just networking clubs and go out there, there's creative uh, guilds, just Google and search and ask around and 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 also um, look for mentors. Look for, there. surprisingly, there are a lot of, no, actually not surprisingly, there are a lot of people willing to take people underneath their wing and show you what's uh, the what's going on in our industry. And just all you have to do is ask, just connect with a lot of people on LinkedIn, be earnest, be, be honest and ask. And I think you'll be very, very happy that you'll have people help out and help you or reach out and help you. Yeah, because we were all there at one point too, you know, getting ready to graduate and and wanting to, you know, get into the world and and yeah. <laughs> definitely, yeah, mentorship and internships and um and we we do a lot of internships at, at Pepper Shock because we want them to learn from us and we get to learn from the interns just as much as they get to learn from us. I mean, if they're in it, right, to to be there and and show up and and do all the things, but that's that's really good advice, Kendall. Cloud Campaign helps agencies scale. Like us, we're an agency and we use this for our clients just the same as you could if you're an agency as well. You can onboard more social media clients and charge a higher retainer with leaner teams. It's a powerful all-in-one platform for planning, scheduling, community management and reporting, all for your agency clients to access and they have one dashboard to see all of their social media. They can approve all of the posts that you've created just like we do for our clients at Peppershock Media. This is a tool for agencies to use for your clients. And if you're a potential client, you want your social media managed, then get a hold of us because we can help you do that too. Go to peppershock.com slash offers to find out more. Okay, so if you could step into my shoes for a minute, because you've been in this world, what should I be asking you that I haven't asked you already? Well, that's uh that's a that's an on the spot thing. Um, I am I'm just delighted that you asked for uh, me to be included on uh, your your podcast. So this has been uh, phenomenal. I think how it all ties together um, is the is the big thing. And also, I mean, don't be too realistic with your expectations. But some of these things do take time. I would say that um, something that's important for anybody getting into this industry is it's not overnight. It really it's but it's also not becoming an actor in Hollywood or anything like that. There is a grind associated with it. And you may want to have that dream job right out of college. Some people do. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some people who uh, are lucky to get into those situations. But sometimes you might have to do something that maybe wasn't your first choice and to get the get the experience or 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 settle for a entry level job. And it's not glamorous at first, but it does get your foot in the door because that's still very much a thing is um, organizations are looking for people who have experience. I mean, open mindedness and, and passion is one thing, but also experience needs to be somewhat a part of your portfolio as well. I think that that's very important for someone to consider when they're jumping into marketing is about how 
you use a, use this time. I mean, if you have if you were a college kid who doesn't have a lot of encumbrances, you're not working a ton of jobs, maybe you haven't a, uh, had a family or significant other yet, this is a great time just to get as many certifications as you can and really load up on what you can accomplish in this industry would be a really good first step into jumping into whoever you end up working for and for your first job out of college. Oh, that's great. And having that lifetime learning mindset that you're always going to be learning something new and, and discovering new things. And like you said, being a part of associations and um, getting the latest and greatest and the trends that are happening and, and understanding those trends and, you know, the areas, especially now that we now the whole new world is in AI, right? And artificial intelligence and virtual reality and augmented reality. And, and things are shifting again, right? We've got the new media again. Well, <laughs> 3.0 web 4.0 it's just evolving <laughs> that's right that's right okay so what are some resources that have helped you along the way maybe some some newsletters that you subscribe to or podcasts that you listen to or things that other people should know about there's a yeah again going back to that i wish i had this wealth of content available to me when I was getting out of college or transitioning out of college. Uh, mm -hmm. The biggest thing is if you're going to be in digital marketing, whether you do it or not, but just to appreciate the intricacy of the platform, but even just consumer behavior in general, is to go through the Google free modules. Um, there's certifications. There's all kinds of things that you can take via YouTube. The skill shop that they have out uh, on that Google provides as a great resource as well. Uh, I would say get a certification, uh, the Google Ads certification, the Google Analytics certifications. We'll learn a lot about those. And I wouldn't say just take the, the, the test. I mean, really absorb the content because learning about how apps are built and learning how truly paid search works is, a, is very important because, I mean, you can look at your own behaviors. That's one piece of it. But go through the Google certifications, and it really does help out. Um, also, get on a nice steady diet of checking industry blogs or industry sites every day. I, I wish I did this every day, but I try to do it three to five times a day or three to five times a week is look at AdAge, uh, for example. There's also... Search Engine Land that's out there, Search Engine Journal, just in even how you curate your feed within LinkedIn gives you a whole nice steady feed of what you can get from different people who not only are dealing with what you're dealing with, but also experts, but also even these companies, they give away just a lot of free advice and everything out there. So just keep listening and curate any of your channels that are out there. And oh, by the way, I love the Marketing Expedition podcast with Ray Allen. Uh, mm -hmm. I've subscribed recently, and it's uh, it's been great listening to your content. I really enjoyed the uh, AI conversation you had recently. That was uh, was really interesting. Fascinating, huh? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for that. Uh, nice little plug there. Thanks, Kendall. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, so as we're talking about the, you know, the students being able to get into their careers, it's it's kind of a shift on how companies work now, right? And and what is attractive. It's not always about the money, right? Sometimes motivation isn't the money. It's more of the benefits or the, you know, what they offer or the flexibility. And you told me that you guys are recently trying out four day work week. I yeah. want to know more. Share share a little bit. I mean, there's probably benefits and drawbacks, but I'd like to hear how it's working out for you and, you know, or maybe not. I don't know. Tell me more. Yeah. So uh, from my visibility and, uh, you know, our leadership is very transparent with us. It's uh, working out well. Uh, so recently, Velox is operating at a, a four days a week, and it is uh, important to um, realize that this is not necessarily a guaranteed Friday is if we are lagging behind on client deadlines and projects and things like that, we are going to have to be involved with our projects on Friday. But psychologically, what this is designed to do is to help us band together as a team, not in a toxic way. And it's um, we, we look at what we have pending and Monday or Tuesday, and we know that we all want to have Friday. I mean, who doesn't want a Friday off to go right. bike riding or do your, your hobbies? And so in a way it elevates your just let's get this done and it's just this very you get invigorated and you put and we seem to push each other it's not not done in a toxic way but we just we seem to just have this unspoken rule just let's get let's make sure we don't 
have to work Friday. Let's all work together and let's push towards a common goal. And we will all earn that wonderful day that we can relax and do exciting things in our personal lives. And so far, so good. It has done that. Um, I can see where it can get taken advantage of if it doesn't, if it isn't defined with expectations of what it requires to get to that point, because it uh, it is one less work day for you to do tasks. Uh, you know, clients, uh, we are transparent that we will be responsive, but let's we'll, we'll come back around to it on Monday, not to kick the can down the road too much, but we do set some expectations around it because we like to think that having that mental day of rest makes us so much more productive on the other four days that we can really, uh, can I swear on your podcast, kick ass. And yeah. we, can, we, can, we can do wonderful things for our clients by having just fresh mind and fresh perspective. So when we come in on Monday, uh, but what I like about a three-day weekend on a semi-regular basis is I can do my, what my spouse has asked for us to get down, you know, the get done with the honeydews, but also what things can I do to get my household in order? And so when Saturday comes around, I have two young kids. We're mm -hmm. starting to think about where do you want to go camping or do you want to go to the trampoline park? And so it's nice because Friday can help you get a lot of things off your plate that you can really truly enjoy that time with your family. Oh, that's great. So do you do it every Friday or I mean every weekend that you can't or week that you can, or is it just periodic? It's uh, it should be consistent, um, it but it uh, just due to whatever we have coming down the pipe of the following week or what we have going on that current week. It's not always a guarantee, but we definitely strive towards doing it. I would say we're definitely above 90 percent of the Fridays yes. that we've been able to take off at this point. And then um, because the, the question that's come up is if you have people who are hourly versus salary salary, how, do, how does that get addressed? I mean, do people make the same amount of money that they made before, even though they're working four hour work or four day work, four hours, four day work week? Or is it, is it, I'm, I, that's my struggle right now is trying to figure out how that would work. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't um, understand the, the business back office dealing of um, how that works for everybody, but at least within our department uh, that I work within, you know, we're all of a similar situation. We're all salary, but that's, that, that's what it is, is, Technically, you know, our, our, our pay rate hasn't changed at this point, but our expectation is that what we did in five days needs to be done in, in, in four. Mm -hmm. And that's very well understood um, how we have worked as a team, not that we were inefficient on five days, but it has pushed us to become a lot more expeditious. Mm -hmm. All of us, when we, they made that announcement, we looked at how we were managing our days, um, mm -hmm. how we were staying productive, um, are we having a lot of duplication of duties? And so a lot of positive things happen from it mm. as we're able to look at maybe some shortcomings in our business. And we, we were able to really get more efficient during the day. And it's allowed us to be a better company overall, I believe. So do you work longer than eight hour days then on the four days that you work? I do. Yeah. Um, sometimes some nights uh, we um you know, we, we do encourage people to work within the daytime hours that best lines up with our clients' needs. And also, they, I mean, Velox wants us to do great things on behalf of our clients, but they also want us to be uh, good to our families. They want us to be good to each other. And so if we're always overworked and feeling like we have to burn the midnight oil all the time, we're not going to be productive for the organization, but we're also not going to be very good to our, our loved ones and our personal relationships. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think um, no it, it, people, it, companies, employers are, are shifting how, how work is, is done, right? How work yep. works now. And, yep. and I think that flexibility and the ability to, you know, be able to schedule your doctor appointments on a Friday, cause you know, you're not going to work and, and be able to do these things. I mean, it does, it does seem if you were Going into the workplace and workforce now, um, you know, some of those things, like I said, monetary isn't always the, the motivator for people. And so looking at that flexibility, looking at the benefits, looking at the company culture and, you know, how you work together as a team. And like you said, efficiencies and, you know, redundancies are removed and, and it just seems like it does it does well. And so I know that you just started doing this like the last few months. Right. And so it seems like it's still still going OK. <laughs> so going very well. Yeah. I mean, selfishly, I, I enjoy it uh, for those reasons I mentioned earlier. And mm -hmm. uh, just as long as we're doing what we're doing, it will continue. And uh, that's that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. 
Well, we'll have to talk some more as I, I've brought the idea up and now it's like kind of just working out the kinks of how it would all work and what would, how would it would go and flow? Cause we do have some people who are hourly versus salary. And so what does that mean? And what does that look like? And all of the above. So yeah. Good, <laughs> good, yeah, good, yeah. Good luck to what you uh, decide to do. It's uh, um, personally, I, I, I enjoy it. I think if you set your expectations, it should be a very positive experience for your, your company. Cool. Yeah, I think we'll do a pilot program first to see, yeah. check it out for, you know, six months and see how it goes. But it does seem like more and more people are, are, are doing the four day work week and, and, you know, becoming more efficient and especially during the summer months, right? Because, you know, you can't get a hold of clients on Fridays anyway. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. So, I mean, they're on their, their mountain bikes and they're out yeah. on the lake boating. Well, I guess we need to be too. <laughs> so that's, know, uh, that's, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's always been nice. In fact, uh, it was nice because last year it was the Boise River was uh, about ready to be shut down for the season. I could go because Brody was taken care of with our tasks mm -hmm. I'm to go float the river. And it's so great to be able to do that and take advantage of the seasonal things. But what's nice of having the four day work week on these other seasons, I also like to do winter sports and having the ability to do that is, is really oh, that's nice. great. Um, okay, a couple more questions. I want you to take an opportunity to plug your company and, and the things that you do. People always ask me, Ray, why do you have competitors on your show? I'm like, no, it's more of like a co-opetition. It's a collaboration. There Absolutely. are things that you do that we don't do. There's things that we do that you don't. And so um, I, I'm happy to always share what's out there in the world. There's enough business for all of us. So um, share a little bit more and uh, kind of, you know, specifically kind of what you're looking for and who you like to work with and your ideal client. And, and then share how people can get in touch with you, Kendall. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right about how there is truly room for everybody to have success in the space. But also, there are lots of different philosophies and different tools out there. If you had to put blocks into a category, we are a digital marketing agency who is hyper focused on search engine marketing and search engine optimization. And that we, we, we don't do brand, not because we don't believe in brand, that's just not one of our service offerings. We really are, what are the activities and what are the things that we're doing to get people to number one positions on search engine results page, pages? What are we doing about maximizing audience coverage? How are we dominating audiences? How are we dominating certain keywords? Uh, what is our relationship of the conversion path to how someone visits us through an organic listing, into a pay listing, into social, and just how that whole uh, thing uh, comes together is we wouldn't have a brand to work with without the work that they do as a company or they work with a branding agency. They we, we wouldn't have an identity to play with. And what we do is really, what are we doing to drive the business result? We optimize towards a conversion and that could be an e-commerce sale. That could be uh, a lead form that could be a lot of things. We work with everybody from health clubs to car dealers to national and worldwide skincare and apparel brands. It, everybody has a different need. The ideal customer is somebody who's looking to grow in a measured way, but also in an aggressive way. We work with clients who are just working a little bit at a time. We also have uh, clients who we just received this infusion of venture capital money. We've received this uh, big grant or we, we, we really just want to go out there and take over the world and it's fun to help them do that. So really we, we, we would love to work with more local regional clients. Uh, we have been enjoying working with the worldwide and the national brands too. And it's so exciting that I get to live in Boise, Idaho and do all these fun things with what's, what's in my backyard, but work with these nationally renowned brands. It's really exciting to have that opportunity to do that. Um, we uh, have an intake team, a digital growth uh, specialist, digital growth manager, who, if anybody's interested with working with Velox, they do a top-down audit of their site as the, and also their current presence and where are the gaps. And we put together somewhat of a roadmap of how we can get to help you grow or help you protect your ownership position on a lot of different things. So it's a very hands-on, very consultative process. And then once that relationship is established, uh, our clients work with uh, a team on, of, across our account management uh, team, and 
various functions and make sure that they're all taken care of and help them move towards these growth goals. Uh, we also believe deeply in reporting, um, having an idea of what the business results are, of what we're trending against uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, last year, that's all really important to us. Um, so we help clients also understand their data. We also, we we don't hide anything. We, we do face problems head on. We notice that we're down in an area or we've completely lost share someplace. We, that's, uh, that's obviously our responsibility to build back up on that or work with the client to establish a new strategy to uh, still have a presence out there on digital marketing. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah, where we do a lot of the content generation and, you know, the videos and design and those types of things and socials and copywriting, then people like you and your company take that to the next level and do the the funnel building, form building, lead generation, conversion tracking and and all of those things. So, yeah, I can definitely see uh, some collaboration efforts there. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Excellent. Okay. Um, any last thoughts before we wrap up today? And, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, the students and Boise Ad Fed and, and the business. I mean, any, any kind of final thoughts there, Kendall? Yeah, I'm exciting for all the fun things that are coming down in digital media. Uh, we talk about this in our organization a lot, but this whole idea that the act of search is not going to be putting text into a white bar anymore on your laptop or on your phone. It really, it becomes a search agnostic activity. You spending a certain amount of time looking at a picture or a certain amount of time looking at a map listing. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, we sat on a call with, uh, with Google that was demoing some of the new things that are coming up with Google My Business and Street View that in an augmented, augmented reality environment, you'll be able to take your phone and scan across the businesses that are, you're on street level with. You'll see how many stars it has, what the menu is. And wow. it, it's just, it's so fantastic that we have this world that we've been seeing in movies and science fiction. It's really here. It's been here for a very long time. I, I sometimes give people a hard time when they keep saying that this digital thing is coming. It's been here for a while. It's been here um, a while. Remember it's when been, it was called new media? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's been it's been a part of our uh, of our world for a very long time now, and I mean, we truly are scraping the surface of how we understand it and how it has positively or maybe neg negatively affected our our lives. But there's more positives than negatives. I love that we are moving into an environment where people are seeing what they need to see with products that they're interested in. It's uh, it's some of this maybe wasted marketing that gets out there, but it doesn't necessarily get to the right people. That seems to be getting more refined with targeting, things that were happening in remarketing and all kinds of signals that we are leaving out there. The consumer profile is built off of a, a lot of signals. And when it puts together a comprehensive pic picture, we have a very targeted niche and it's nice to be able to show a client that that we've been able to get down to this type of persona or this type of profile because it's not an 18 plus game it's not a 25 to 54 game it really truly is who is this buyer i need to understand who my buyer is and using all of these tools that google has facebook has and a, a business uh, intelligence tools it's really important to understand that is in i would say the other thing is Companies, if they aren't looking at their data constantly, they, they need to. Who's coming to your site is very reflective of who you need to be reaching. It sounds like a very open and broad and obvious concept, but it's true. It's, it's very important to take whoever is very receptive to your marketing already and amplify that and scale that. Mm -hmm. That's really important for any company to do these days. Well, it's just... One thing to look at it, but it's another thing to completely understand it and then exactly. use it and leverage the data to your advantage and, and analyze what you can do differently or better. Stop, start, keep or tweak doing exactly. as you continue to build and have iterations and, and continue on beyond just having that understanding too. I think that's, maybe a, one of the components that happens when you know you get reports from the vendors and you look at it and you're like okay well so what does this mean what can i what can i get get what can i get from now understanding what i have in front of me and and that's that's another big piece of the puzzle that needs to be done too yeah <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it, it all it all looks really good theoretical, but I, it it takes uh it just takes an extra initiative to put it in practice and when when you do that exciting things can happen. And the the last thing i wanted to say is um, I think this is more outside of the realm of what we actually do in terms of the 
the process and the job in the industry is what are we doing about how are we participating in our teams and our environments? How am I being a positive teammate? Am I mentoring somebody? Am I asking for help from a mentor? Um, you know, that's something that I talk about with our team here, but even um, other groups I've been a part of, and I really encourage anybody to look at it in similar ways. How are you being a positive contributor to your organization? How are you being a part of the uh, the overall success? And I mean, you know, we you don't want to work with a difficult person. Um, you ask yourself, you know, am I the difficult person? Or if you want to um, see if people are having some struggles or having a hard time outside in their personal life, being mindful of that and also being available to help not only help the worker and help them build their skill sets, but also make sure that we're all okay as humans too. Uh, we're all under a lot of stress. And I think that it's just really important to take that extra second and that extra bit of awareness to make sure that we're all moving forward together. And whoever might be having a hard time is to work with them and, 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 and help them grow in whatever things that might be debilitating them from working on any kind of tasks in the meantime is uh, help them grow and just just be a good person and be a good human and be a good teammate. That's that's something that I've really stuck behind in my career. And I really hope other organizations would, would do that as well. Definitely. And especially after all the things that have been going on in our world and, you know, all the the negative uh, tragedies and things that have occurred, it's really good to have that positive outlook to keep people's mental health in mind. And it's it's definitely it's it's real you know people need to like you said be uh, aware of that so thank Absolutely. you for pointing that out for sure excellent kendall well thank you so very much for sharing all of these wonderful nuggets and sharing more about the boise ad fed and american ad fed and all the things that people can be a part of if you're in the industry and you haven't signed up for something like that like some sort of association we we recommend it <laughs> highly yep Excellent. And for those of you listening, um, the best thing that you can do is share this with others that you know that need to hear what we had to talk about today. And of course, give us a review because those are like gold for podcasters. <laughs> and um, until next time, everyone, enjoy the marketing journey. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Expedition Podcast. Want to continue the journey? Don't miss out on new episodes. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Wouldn't it be great if there was one place you can go to get all the latest information and tips about marketing and advertising? The Marketing Expedition community is that place. People like you gather in our online community to build relationships with others and find the latest marketing trends, tactics, tools, and technology. We help you build your brand and your bottom line. Start your adventure today. Visit themarketingexpedition.com to find out more.